That's why people like our show, because they know that we are checked by ABC News. But we're if, checked by everybody. Yeah, I mean, if, if we're wrong, we have, you know, the legal note here. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the human legal but note? The, in my, we went from Walter Cronkite, mm -hmm. basically, to this guy, Joe Rogan, who believes in dragons. All right, there you go. Joy Behar on The View saying that people believe in The View because they're checked by ABC News. Yeah, they're checked by ABC News. Who's possibly more credible than ABC News? I mean, David Muir and Lindsey Davis are probably looking over everything to make sure that everything is just dead on accurate. Can you imagine that these are the people who want to crack down and cancel others for misinformation and disinformation, the same people that are having to read more legal notes than somebody that's a paralegal for a Supreme Court justice? Who's reading more legal notes than these people? Maybe if you were more invested in accurate information, you wouldn't be having to walk back stuff on your show all the time because your legal team is afraid that somebody's going to sue you because you're on television making shit up. Making shit up like Joe Rogan is a dragon believer. Making shit up like Elon Musk is actually the vice president of the United States, says Whoopi Goldberg. Elon Musk, he's the real vice president. J.D. Vance isn't going to do anything. Don't you know that? Whoopi Goldberg knows that somehow because I, I guess she just is tuned in to everything better than the rest of us. These people are more full of shit than the Thanksgiving turkey that you're going to eat next week. And they're telling others what they can say, what they can't say, what's misinformation, what's disinformation. These are the same people that want to be in control of what other people can say, Ronnie. I, I asked you this yesterday. I'll ask you again. I'm going to ask you every time you bring something up from The View. Who actually watches that stupid show? Like, they are so full of themselves. They're so condescending. Do you ever see any of them doing interviews with somebody else, they're just in their little echo chamber where they're like, yeah, girl, you yeah, you go, girl. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they have their stupid crowd clapping for them. I want to see one of them on Gutfeld. I want to see one of them interviewed by you. I want to see one of them interviewed by Clay Travis. Like, you never see them anywhere else but their own little, their little table there where they all just, oh, Ricky, I hate them. I hate them so much. Why do you do this to me? Well, why don't you tell me what you really think? Get off the fence, Ron. <laughs> well, could you have a take uh, on this, please? Look, I don't <laughs> want to interview them, but it would be a nice idea if they brought people with differing viewpoints onto their show. Can you imagine what Megan Kelly would do with yeah. that group? It'd be like it'd be like a fucking Tom Cruise movie where he beats up five people at the same time. Megan Kelly has more brain power than everybody sitting at that table. Get gathered together. I would pay to see that. I would accept Clay Travis as well in that role. How about this, Ron? This is how you feel about the view. Look at that. Look at that fork. I said the only thing worse than a fork that flattens your tire is a fork that flattens your tire and then flips you off. That's how you feel about Sonny Hostin right there. That fork. Yeah. Well, all of them. That's all, you. All of them. All of them. Ron, we are at a point in the program now where I have to ask you a question that uh, you have received before from me, but let's do it anyway. What the fuck, Ron? So Joe Biden, or should I say whoever runs his ex account, is tone deaf. They posted, they posted this the same day that the monster that killed Lake and Riley was convicted today on transgender day of remembrance we mourn the transgender americans whose lives were taken this year in horrific acts of violence every american deserves to be treated with dignity and live free from discrimination today we recommit to building a country where everyone is afforded that promise really person that tweets for president biden like th that this is what you put up and as far as i know there was no mention of of what happened with with uh, Lake and Riley, um, so I I don't know, Ricky. It just it just it's just just getting it's just getting it's getting more disgusting every day, and and not to be well, outdone, Ron, you know, dude. Well, it, it, Ricky, not just... to be outdone, not to be outdone. 
there was another monster, Danny Savalas. It's a writer at MSNBC. He thought it would be a good idea to write an article titled, The Guilt of Lake and Riley's Killer Was Never in Doubt. This one is a different one, but it says Lake and Riley's killer never stood a chance. He claims that because it was a political uh, rally cry at this summer's Republican National Convention, that the outcome of the trial was never in doubt. Like, this is vile, disgusting, sick. Like, I, I give, give me more ways to describe it, Ricky. I don't know, Ron. I mean, I I, I look through it. Is the, is the person who wrote the article suggesting that this individual was innocent? What what is the what is the he, angle? He's not suggesting he's not suggesting that he's innocent. He's just he's just suggesting that the way the trial happened, he just never had a chance. He never had a fair shake at at at, at, his, at his trial. It was determined well, before you know who, it happened. You know who else didn't have a fair shake? Lake and Riley Lakin? didn't have a fair yeah. shake. Fuck yeah. you. I hope you rot in jail. You, you, you fucking disgusting monster killer monster monster. You know, I mean, whatever, put him up, put him under the jail. You know, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's insanity to me, Ron, much like you see this guy on the right who was released without bail in New York after raping a woman at knife point back in August of 23, Ibarra was also arrested in New York also released without bail, and in September, the very next month, the Biden administration put him on a so-called humanitarian flight to Georgia, where he arrived and five months later killed Lake and Riley. You've got Daniel Penny, right, who uh, Hero. subdued the guy Hero. On, the, on the subway, and now... You know, if they find him guilty, Trump will pardon him. At least we right. know that that will happen now. It's a, it's a travesty that Daniel Penny has charges brought against him at all. He he behaved heroically. You'd be fucking praying that you had a Daniel Penny on your, your subway car if you found yourself in that situation. The other guy was a dangerous person, and Daniel Penny, what's happening to him is uh, a- absolutely a, a horrible miscarriage of justice that he's in this position, Ronnie. But a- again, I just cannot stress enough how disgusting what MSNBC, this writer, Danny Savalas, again, a monster for even putting, if, if, if he's a, he's a political or he's a legal analyst for them. If at some point he wanted to go back and review this and, and, and say, Hey, listen, here, here's what happened in this thing. Kind of feels like this and that, but it's the timing. The timing is disgusting, and the fact that MSNBC allowed it to be posted is even more disgusting. Like, it's one of those things, man. Sometimes I wonder why do I get so mad at this stuff that doesn't actually affect me, but it's just vile and disgusting. There, Joe Rogan tweeted. I think he tweeted something. What the fuck? And just it was he quote well, tweeted that. Ron, it's like the com- uh, there it's he goes. Like what the, the what the fuck Harris- is this shit? It's like the Kamala Harris Prop 36 thing where California voters this year voted to in, it reinstitute harsher penalties for shoplifters and drug crimes. And I think that we need to move away. One of the things and one of the many reasons that the left was rejected in, in this election and that Republicans will now control both houses as well as the White House is it seems like the left has gone so far off. It doesn't seem like it. It's true that in many cases, the left has gone so far off the rails that they care more about the criminal than the victims of the criminals. And it's ridiculous. What about this poor criminal? What about, well, he did this because of this. What about him? Fuck you. You commit a crime. We've all got, there's lots of people in this world that have horrible, tragic, sad backstories that grow up to follow the law, right? There's a lot of people that come from unfortunate circumstances who don't go out and victimize other people and commit crimes. So don't tell me that just because you have some sort of problem, you know, in your life or you've had unfortunate 
uh, issues in your background that you're going to automatically somehow, uh, you know, be a slave to your uh, worst impulses. I understand. I was a sociology professor for 21 years. I understand that your background and your life experiences do impact you and affect decisions that people make. But when we start caring more about the criminal than the victim, we have lost the plot and we got to restore some sanity to this country again. And that's a big part of the reason that you saw the result earlier this month in the election that you did. Did you see Thursday night football from Cleveland, Ohio? Last night, the Pittsburgh Steelers traveled to Cleveland to take on Jameis Winston and the mighty Cleveland Browns, and we got Mother Nature, the MVP of this game. Take a look at this. Snowball fight in the end zone. I love it. I love it. NFL players are kids again. Look at that. And you can see first quarter, fourth quarter. Which one do you prefer there in that before and after? I'm going to tell you right now, I'm all about the after because I can't get enough snow football. And one of the nicest things about the calendar turning to the latter part of November means that we've got a couple of months of the elements becoming more important within the game of football. And with teams relying on the passing game more than ever in the modern NFL and in modern college football for that matter, ah, the snow, it's an equalizer sometimes. It gets you back in touch with your inner Larry Zonka because sometimes you got to run the football when it's in the snow. And I tweeted this. I've tweeted this one a number of times. When it comes to football, I have always subscribed to the philosophy, the more snow, the better. And I mean that. Give me as much snow as we can possibly get. I want it to be like the goddamn ice capades out there. I want to see motherfuckers sliding around. I want people to not even be able to control themselves whatsoever on that field. The more chaotic it gets, the better it is. And it's good for underdogs, let's face it. Uh, The Browns profiting uh, from that last night is the weaker team. Mother Nature said, you know what, Cleveland Browns, you're in this one. And they pull off a home win. Let me go now to the international streaming star who joins me from Nashville, Tennessee, Ronnie T-Shirts, here getting ready to start his weekend early. And Ronnie, dude, it takes me back every time I see a snow game like that to being a kid, getting out of school, some big snow comes, school's canceled, you call up your buddies or you get out with the guys in the neighborhood, somebody gets out the football, and let's fucking go. Yep. It's it's just there's so much about the the snow football that just it just does something to your brain, man. So it's the nostalgic part of it where we we think about what we did as kids. But then there's that kind of cozy romantic thing where it's like last night we had the fireplace on. Lori was under a blanket. And we just feel safe and cozy. Hey now, Ron. And we're hey now, hey now, Ron. Lori it's was under a, little, a blanket. I was did not. Did it just did it just get a little erotic in here? What just there, happened there? There was no bearskin did, rug. Did you put on purple rain <laughs> at that point, Ron? It was when doves cry. Um, <laughs> there was no, there was no same bearskin. Album. Same album, brother. Yeah, no bearskin rug. There was no like fruit and cheeses or anything like that she was on one side of the couch i was on the other side of the couch our dog carmen was up there with us but there's just something comforting and cozy about being in your house knowing that everybody out there is just cold and wet and it's just miserable Listen, ron and, oh it's so good i agree it's with so you so good i agree with you it's it's nice to be warm and cozy and comfortable in your house but you don't need to be warm and cozy and comfortable in the stadium. And Cleveland is going to ruin this magic because they want to get rid of the stadium that they currently have and replace it with a domed stadium that would open, I believe, in 2029. 
is yeah. what is is being discussed in Cleveland. Why would you ever do that? There are, you know, it's like the Green Bay Packers should never build a dome, right? It's one thing if if you have a dome in a lot of locations in this country. And if you're beating the heat with a dome, right. All right, fine. Build a fucking dome if it's if it's Houston or or whatever, right? Las Vegas. Yep. Have your have your dome. But Cleveland, Chicago, G- Green Bay, Buffalo. Minnesota, in my opinion, Buffalo. These are all examples of places where the elements should be a part of football mm-hmm. and they shouldn't do it. And and look, Ron, if you don't believe me, just ask the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns, Jameis Winston. This is really an NFL spin moment. The snow starts pouring down. It starts getting like the, the I feel like the my feet start getting heavy because I'm I'm squishing through the snow. And uh man, it was so good and it was so great to end up, you know. Look at that. Jameis knows. Jameis knows. Couldn't say it any better treasure. myself. He really, really is. The more that Jameis Winston speaks the more that I'm getting behind this guy. You know, I used to really like him as a quarterback because he was just a gunslinger. Mm-hmm. Remember that one year he had, I think it was, uh, God, where was he with, was he with the Buccaneers when he had 33? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He had 33 touchdown passes and 30 interceptions. Yep. I, he was just winging it. Somebody was catching everything. Sometimes yep. they were on his team. Sometimes they weren't. But mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, man, it's fun, and and I'll never forget. I wasn't even in high school. I remember we got about I don't know five or six inches of snow. This was like early '90s. I want to say it was '92, '93. Me and my buddies were all college age, and it just comes this huge dump. And in Kentucky, those were more precious. Here in Chicago. You're, you're going to get a lot more of it, right? But in Kentucky, getting four, five, six inches of snow, we might that might happen once every three winters, and it would probably only happen one time, you know, if that. And so we all got together. And what's better, man? You 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 layer up, so you're wearing three pairs of pants and three t-shirts and a sweatshirt and a jacket. Or nothing. And you get out there and you just beat the hell out of it. You just beat the hell out of each other. But I guess some men don't even require a single layer of protection. Maybe a layer over their face, Ron. Look at look at this. I mean, <laughs> look at this let's guy. Be, let's be honest. He is not uh he's not using Ozempic, so he he's got some layers of protection. They're just underneath his skin. <laughs> he does. I uh you know, I loved him in the nineteen ninety three Royal Rumble. <laughs> Ron, I think he was I think he was eliminated by I don't know. He was eliminated by Hulk Hogan or somebody that somebody that year and he has the same physique as this guy. Look at this. They go to the they they, they have the same personal trainer, Ron. That guy in Grimace. You can see here I say after a hard day at the office, there's just nothing like pouring a nice whiskey in your Grimace glass and Reflecting upon where your life has gone wrong. I think Grimace would be in favor of snow football, Ron. I I really who do would, believe that. What are your wouldn't? what are your favorite what are your favorite snow games, Ronnie? Like does All anything right. come to mind for you? Classic so I've snow. Got, so I've got a I've got a couple. Football. Uh there was I don't know how many years ago it was. It had to be within the last ten years because I was living here and the Bills were playing the Colts. And the 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 Bills were wearing their all red uniforms, and the Colts were wearing all white. It was kind of a color rush game. Ricky, there was so much snow that you you could up oh, look look at that look at that. Is that just that's like hang that in Gorgeous. the hang that hang that in an art museum, man? Look at that. Put it in the Louvre, oh. baby. Yeah, gorgeous. Look how deep. Look look at look at McCoy's feet. You can barely see his feet. Uh, the, his uh his right foot. There was that much snow. It was like six it looks or seven like the inches. Of snow. I'm I'm waiting yeah. for a dog sled to yeah. And then come there was somebody a, uh, mushing. Yeah, and then a few years ago, Ricky, there was a football game, and I, I should say a football game. It was uh US was playing Costa Rica in soccer in Denver. Look at that, dude. It was 
the ball could barely roll on the field. Like I, we were in a hotel Bro, room. Look at that. All right. Now see that right there could make me a soccer fan, right? That, that would help. That would help get me interested in soccer. If we could get it out in the elements like that winter, winter soccer, that should be a thing. Look, that ball's like you know? half the ball is covered like it was so deep. Wearing it's shorts. It's not going to affect anybody. They weren't going to fucking score any goals anyway, right? <laughs> it was going to be zero to zero. It would be two Don't clean you sheets. To see it with the ex- yeah, the explosive scoring of a soccer game is ruined by <laughs> snow. That always bums me. Always bums me out. Ron, my favorite... Of all time, and I and I'll start with one. I I remember the Cowboys playing the Dolphins. I think it was Thanksgiving, nineteen ninety three, is how I remember it. Somebody can fact check me on this. It was the Leon Lett game. The Leon Lett, not yeah, the yeah, Super was, Bowl. Yeah. Yep. But but the one where they blocked a Pete Stoyanovich field goal to save the game, and the ball is still moving in the end zone, and Leon Lett attempted to recover it, I think, and it squirted out of the end zone, and it actually gave the Dolphins another opportunity to kick a field goal, and they made it and won the game. But Keith Byers, your boy from OSU, uh, had a kickoff return touchdown in that game, and when he got to the end zone, he just fell on the ground and started making a snow angel. Did he originate that? Waving his arms, which... I don't think he originated it, but he's the only person up until that point in time I had ever seen do it as a celebration. Well, yeah, I meant like a, in a football in a game. Like game. I meant in a football game. Yeah. yeah, okay. I thought you meant did he create <laughs> snow angels? And I was like, no, you <laughs> dumb son of a bitch. Of course, of course not. I was trying to be nice with your with your six year old kid question that I thought that you had just asked me. But my favorite, Ron, I think this is the the goat. <laughs> is uh, the snowplow game in Foxborough in Mm -hmm. 1982, also involved the Miami Dolphins. Don Shula got screwed over twice on snow games in Dallas. Uh, Well, he won. Actually, he got his retribution in 93 because the Dolphins won because of Leon Lett's mistake, uh, which may have erased some of the pain of this 1982 game. Take a look at the snowplow there, Ron. Ron Meyer, the head coach of the New England Patriots, in a 0-0 game with the Miami Dolphins in Foxborough, four minutes and change left in the fourth quarter. The Patriots get down in field goal range, and Ron Meyer instructs the snowplow driver to come out and clear a place for them to spot the football for the field goal attempt. And, and that's illegal they now, actually right? Actually, gave yes. He was a convict on a work release program. Mark Henderson was his name, and they actually gave him a game ball. And there you see it. He cleared the path, and John Smith, the Patriots kicker, punched it through, and the Patriots beat the Dolphins three to nothing. And Mark Henderson, who, as I said, was on a work release program from prison after the game and when it was controversial, his, his quote, Ron, you're going to love this. He said, right. what are they going to do? Throw me in jail. <laughs> what can you do to me? I'm already a convict. So uh, that one's pretty classic, but yeah, shades of some great memories last night in Cleveland for sure. Ronnie. So it seems like uh, a lot of rules happen in new England in snow games, right? So, that's illegal to do now, right? You're not allowed to go out and clear a man. Like you can't have help. Like the players can try to clear a spot for kicking, but you can't bring a snowplow or a shovel out. The tuck rule happened in New England in a snow game, wasn't it? A snow game against the Raiders. Yes. And then yeah, it sure and was. And then it's like the Dolphins are involved. Is it karma that the Dolphins are involved in all these snow games and even cold games? Because you know they played. Was it? It was last. But last year they played in that insanely cold game in Kansas city. So I think it might be karma that they could, they get to live in Miami that they have to play in all. And these it's snow supposed games. to be an advantage. The thing that I've always heard is, you know, this is Chicago bears weather. You know, this is bears weather. This is Packers weather. And when you have a team like the Miami dolphins, right. Who are playing in a, in a great climate, 
half the time at least, and and on the road they're playing in pretty good climates, you know, most of the time. When they come in, that's supposed to be all right. There's an advantage here, yeah, because we got yeah. these soft South Beach guys on our Ooh. on our tundra, and I think the Browns are, I think the Browns are screwing up something good, man. Well, Ricky, you know, there's a lot of people that are really hoping in that in this uh, new iteration of college football playoffs that that's going to happen because right now it's looking like there could be three Big Ten teams hosting the first uh, the first round of playoffs, and it could be Alabama, Miami, Georgia having to go up to places like Penn State, Indiana, Ohio State. Like it it could happen in college football. Yeah, I mean, take a look at this. Uh, this guy here uh, says. Whether right now at the schools that would currently be hosting a uh, college football playoff game in one month, and not great, dude. <laughs> 32 and snowing in Columbus, 35 and raining in Happy Valley, 32 and snowing in Bloomington, and 31 and snowing in South Bend, dude. So um, I don't know if we have really considered how the elements – uh, could play into this college football playoff, but it's kind of a brave new world here. And yeah. with these teams hosting home games later in the season, then we're accustomed to seeing uh, college football teams playing in their their home uh, venues. Uh, you know, Mother Mother Nature might have something to say about the outcome of one or more of these games. Have you ever been in attendance at a sporting event that the weather was just so awful that you just were just mad at yourself for being there? Yes, I I went to a Bears Packers game. I don't know, maybe seven or eight years ago, and it was it was sub zero. Okay, it was sub zero, mm -hmm. and it was so cold. And Ron, you know, I've told you, you know, I'm not a big beer drinker, but I but I had a beer at this game. Oh God! And my beer formed ice in it as it, as I held it in my hand during the game. And I'm wearing gloves with, you know, hand warmer stuff down in there and whatever. But my beer was literally freezing as I consumed it. And, you know, do I regret being there? No. Looking back on it now, it's an awesome memory. Absolutely. Was it uncomfortable? Was it uncomfortable at the time? And did I bit. question whether or not I wanted to be at home under a blanket with you and Lori? <laughs> and there, Carmen. There's a... There's a thought for you. <laughs> yeah, I probably thought about how good it would look on television maybe once or twice while I was in the stadium, but that's part of it, dude. You know, you get a story to tell. It's it's part of the experience. Our our lives are too fucking easy today, Ron. Everything's so so easy, you know? We're, what are we afraid of? A little weather? Come on, let's toughen up, America. Stephen A. Smith is speaking candidly about Bronny James, as we have on this show as well. We've got some, uh, we got some sound here of Stephen A. saying what he thinks the situation is in Los Angeles with Bronny James. What do you think happens for his kid once he's out? Like, do you well, think they're kind of doing this as a favor? But no, for, first of all, there's no question. Yeah. There's, yeah. Let, there's let, no let, question. Let, let's cut the BS. Sure. There's no question that it's a favor. Mm. Bronny James did not do uh, what it took to earn a spot on an NBA roster. That's the bottom line. Hang on, Ron. I am being, I am being told now, oh, wait a minute, water is wet and the sky is blue. <laughs> of course he didn't. He should never have been drafted. And then they give him the guaranteed four-year contract money when – realistically, even if you argued that he was a viable pick in the mid fifties where he went in this year's draft, he certainly did not merit any guaranteed money. It's all wink, wink, nod, nod. Let's make LeBron's dreams come true. And I got nothing against Bronny James. Seems like a good kid. It's not his fault. If I were in his shoes, I wouldn't have said, no, no, dad, I don't want to play in the NBA. I don't deserve it. No, I would have suited up and I would have taken advantage of every opportunity that my famous father afforded me. And I wouldn't worry about what anybody thought about that. But having said this, Ron, I just don't think the kid has what it takes to play in the NBA. Hey, Ricky, I have stats up right here from he's played in two 
uh, G League games. First uh, game uh-huh. was the ninth against Salt Lake City Stars. He played 31 minutes. He was two for nine from the field, six total points, over four from uh, three point. And on the 17th, he played Stockton, which is a Kings team, 26 minutes, two for 10, 0 for two from three pointers, four points. Dude's not very good. He's just not very good. And we saw it in college. He mm-hmm. played for a not good USC team and averaged, what, five points a game and yes. had a lousy shooting percentage, sub 40% shooting percentage. There was there was nothing there. I mean, is there potential that he could become like some hard nosed defensive guy specialist that could get five or ten minutes a night somewhere? Maybe, but he would have had, in my opinion, he would have been much better off staying in college and not for one more year. He probably should have stayed in college and played through his senior year. Absolutely. And then taken a shot at. Now, you know, that LeBron wasn't going to last that long. So I don't think that was an option, right? His daddy ain't going to be in the league then, most likely. So anyway, they got what they wanted. They played together. Bronny has scored, you know, what's he got? Four points or something. Good for him. But Stephen A is certainly, Stephen A is certainly correct. Ron, are you ready for robot umpires? Major League Baseball is moving down the line towards robot umpires This spring, coming up, in Florida and Arizona both, I presume, uh, they're going to test this as part of a challenge system, 13 different ballparks that host 19 major league teams total. Some teams, I believe, share facilities. Um, And if all goes well, and they've already been doing this in AAA, Ryan, It could be in the game in 2026. Now, part of this, the challenge system, Ron, last year in the Pacific Coast League, managers got three challenges on ball strike calls. And in the International League, they got two. So I guess they're testing out at, you know, the next highest level of baseball in this country below the big leagues. How are things going to go? So is is it going to be two challenges? Is it going to be three challenges? But what happens in some instances? Say there's a ball on the corner and the umpire doesn't call it a strike. You can now challenge that is what it looks like it's going to be. We're not there quite yet, but you'll be able to challenge it. And you'll either get two or three challenges most likely. And if you win, it's going to be like football. You don't lose your challenge. Okay. So, so potentially, if you keep being correct, unlimited. I guess it could be theoretically unlimited. And I saw a clip, we, don't, we can't show it, but I saw a clip of a AAA game from last year where a pitcher, you know, threw a pitch, it was kind of borderline, umpire didn't call it, and then the catcher turned around. I assume that the catcher probably has an earpiece in or something, and the manager tells him to do this. The catcher turns around. They challenge it. The umpire comes up out of his crouch. He walks over to the side, and then with some radio connection that he has, he waits for them to tell him what the system said. So, dude, do we need to be delaying? I know they've sped the game up with the pitch clock, but I hate these little micro delays. There is no single ball or strike call. Dude, in an average major league game, there's probably, what, 250 or more pitches. Mm -hmm. Somewhere between 250 and 300 pitches, probably, in a nine-inning game. It might be closer to 300 these days, the way that the game is played. I don't know. But somewhere I'd say it's between 250 and 300 a game. Is, Is any one single ball or strike call important enough to stop the game and have somebody in the umpire's ear telling him what to do. do are, are we chasing, are we letting perfect be the enemy mm-hmm. of the good with this kind of thing? It seems a little anal retentive to me. I might be in the minority on that, Ron. I, I think you're, I think you're a hundred percent right until you're not right. So it's the a team's mounting a rally and, and a uh, guy gets called out and gets strike out. And it kills the rally, but he's like, that was a ball. And maybe that ball would have, it was a three, two count. And maybe it would have 
bases were loaded. Like, so you're right until you're not right. And then it matters, well, right? Ron, so, speaking of balls, did you say uh-oh. balls? <laughs> I remember when human umpires would grab you by the balls and then they'd throw you around. Let's see a robot umpire do that. We're losing Look something it. very important. You can't even kick dirt mm. on a robot the, umpire. I know, but Ronnie, r- r- Real quick, I want you just to, to you, you know what I do when you put these things up here. I, I look past the main part of the picture and I look for other things, which I know you do too. Look how happy and content that guy is, that the ump is, just having his nose right there in that guy's butt. Like he, <laughs> I, he looks I so peaceful. You were gonna, dude, I thought you were going to re- re- refer to that the, the happy kid. <laughs> that kid's pretty He's funny just too. Delighted <laughs> to be observing it, but I said, "Let's see a robot umpire grab a fan by the balls and throw him off the field." We've got AI priests taking Jesus. confessions yeah. in Switzerland, Ron. That's actually an AI any, Jesus, not an AI priest. Any, oh, it's it, oh, it come, we're eliminating the middleman. Is that what's happening? Yeah, a hundred, it's just yes, AI it's a, Jesus. Okay. AI Jesus, yeah. Jesus is no longer necessary. <laughs> Jesus, no longer necessary. Why should Angel Hernandez be, I guess, is what it comes down to. I hope they didn't program it with Angel Hernandez (laughs) intelligence, these robot umpires. That might not work out well. Hey, OutKick fans on YouTube. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the subscribe button and make your way over to OutKick.com where you can watch the full episode.